ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم وبعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم والشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وبعد عن جندب ابن عبد الله البجلي رضي الله تعالى عنه قال كنا مع النبي صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم ونحن فتيان حذاورة فتعلمنا الإيمان قبل أن نتعلم القرآن ثم تعلمنا القرآن فازددنا به إيمانا on the authority of Jundub, the son of Abdullah al-Bajali, radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa radahu, who said that we were young men and had not even reached the age or getting close to the age of puberty while we were with the Messenger of Allah, the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said that we learned El Iman before we learned the Quran. We learned El Iman before we learned the Quran. Then we learned the Quran and the Quran increased us in Iman. My beloved brothers and sisters in Al Islam, you should all know that Iman is a Tawheed and that a Tawheed is Al Iman. And when we look at them with the correct eyesight, looking them straight on, Iman and Taqwa and Tawheed and Islam, they are all the same. Iman is the result of Tawheed and Tawheed is the basis and the fundamentals and the foundation of Iman. We have learned from the scholars of Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah that the scholars of the past have categorized Al Iman which is a Tawheed into three categories and there is no fourth. The first is that which the prophets of Allah did not come with to those people. The prophets and the messengers did not come to their respective people with Tawheed or Rububiyya. The belief that Allah has uniqueness in his oneness as the creator, as the owner, and as the administrator of all the affairs of his creatures. He creates by himself, he owns everything by himself, and he takes care of all the affairs of every single creature in al alamin by himself. The scholars of Ahl Sunnah, they say that those prophets and messengers, they came with Tawheed al uluhiyya because those people of the past, more specifically with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who came to those Bedouin Arabs and he came to those Jews and he came to those Christians and he came to those Magians, the Majus, the fire worshippers and he came to the Zoroastrians and he came to those people and he did not teach them the details of Tawheed al rububiyya but rather he taught them the details of how they should worship Allah. That they should worship Allah singularly, alone, 
no ascription with a partner whatsoever from the creatures to Allah. And he and they, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhim ajma'een, they came also with the knowledge of Allah's names, the most beautiful names, and the perfect attributes, which is the belief in the tawheed and al-asma wa sifat. The ulama of Islam, they say, لِمَعْرِفَةِ أَسْمَاءِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى أَهَمِّيَّةِ كَبِيرَةِ لِأَجْلِ مَا يَلِي إِلَى الْأَنَّ الْعِلْمِ بِاللَّهِ وَأَسْمَاءِ وَصِفَاتِهِ أَشْرَفُ الْعُلُومِ وَأَجَلِّهَا عَلَى الْإِطْلَاقِ لِأَنَّ الشَّرْفَ الْعِلْمِ بِالشَّرْفِ الْمَعْلُومِ وَالْمَعْلُومِ فِي هَذَا الْعِلْمِ هُوَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى بأسمائه وصفاته وأفعاله فالاشتغال بفهم هذا العلم والبحث التام عنه اشتغال بأعلى المطالب وحصوله للعبد من أشرف المواهب ولذلك بينه الرسول صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم غاية البيان ولا أهمات ولا الاهتمام الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم ببيانه لم يختلف فيه الصحابة رضي الله عنهم أجمعين كما اختلفوا في الأحكام العلماء أهل السنة والجماعة they say that knowing the beautiful names and the most perfect attributes of Allah is a very important matter indeed for the following reasons that knowledge of Allah and his names and his attributes is the noblest and best of all knowledge because the level of honor of any kind of knowledge has to do with the object of that knowledge and the object of knowledge in this case is Allah that is brothers and sisters is that if we want to be straight in this life if we want correction in this life if we want to rid ourselves of psychological problems and social ills if we want economic empowerment if we want political astuteness if we want to move things and shake things and be superior in the land no matter what land it is under the sky of Allah we have to do it by way of Tawheed there will never ever be any correction of any ill or disease or problems or malaise or illness of any type except by way of knowing who Allah is and what Allah is and where Allah is by knowing Allah's names and Allah's attributes and that he has to be singled out without any anthropomorphism no humanistic qualities no animalistic traits whatsoever that he is singular he is Al-Ahad Al-Wahid Al-Samad we will never ever rid ourselves of any problems until we go back to Tawheed Al-Uluhiyyah and we shroud that belief in the unicity and the uniqueness of Allah's oneness in that type of Tawheed by knowing Allah's names, understanding Allah's names, enumerating Allah's names, understanding how to implement His names and His attributes. He has given us 99 to call on him by those ulama they say so occupying oneself with seeking this knowledge and studying it properly is the pursuit of the highest objective and acquiring this knowledge is one of the best gifts a person may be given because the prophet salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi wa barakatuhu explained it meaning a tawheed meaning al-iman in the most concise and most clearest way possible 
And he did it in a very keen way. And the Sahaba, at no time in the 23 years, did they ever, even for a second, dispute about the issues of a Tawheed, nor did they deny the fact that it stopped them from burying their female, their female children alive in the deserts of Arabia. They had no doubt whatsoever that Tawheed was the thing that made them spit out the alcohol that they had in their mouths when the verses came down. Before the Quran came down, they said, we learned Iman at Tawheed. It was Tawheed that made them regurgitate what they had in their stomachs if they even had a doubt that it was haram. Not knowing that it was haram, if they even had a doubt, it was because of Tawheed. It was because of Tawheed that on that day when the verses came down, to get rid of the use of intoxicants. It was Tawheed that was used for the best rehabilitation center, the best preventative measures to get rid of people who used to write poetry on the spot, 70 verses, 100 verses, 500 verses of poetry right on the spot, freelance, freestyle. And we saw on those days, that day when the verses came down, because of Tawheed, that rehabilitation took place where the streets of Al Medina were flooded with alcohol. And they didn't just get rid of the alcohol. They broke up every single container that the alcohol came in. It was because of Tawheed. Because the Prophet wasallam explained it clearly. The companions had no doubt and they never differed. They only differed in the issues, the affairs of legal rulings. The ulama, they say, knowing Allah makes a person love him and fear him and put his hope in him and be sincere towards him in his actions. This is the essence of human happiness. This is the essence of human happiness. There is no way to know Allah except by knowing His most beautiful names and seeking a proper, a proper understanding of their meanings. The ulama of Islam, they say that knowing Allah by His most beautiful names increases one's Iman. And Shaykh Abdul Rahman Ibn Nasr al Sa'di, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he says, and al Imani bi Asma illahi al Husna, wa ma'rifatuha, yatadomanu an wa'at tawheed al Thalatha, tawheed al Rububiya, wa tawheed al Uluhiya, wa tawheed al Asma iwa Sifat, wa hadihi al Anwa'u hiya rawh. روح الإيمان وروحه هو الفرح والاستراحة من غم القلب وأصله وغايته فكلما زاد العبد معرفة بأسماء الله وصفاته ازداد إيمانه وقوي يقينه He said believing and knowing the most beautiful names of Allah includes the three types of Tawheed. Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah, and Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat. And three, these three types of Tawheed form the essence and joy of Iman. And the word joy here, he said, it means to be relieved of stress, relieved of anxiety, Relieved of depression, relieved of frustration, relieved of your bipolar, relieved of all the diseases by way of Tawheed, by way of that which Tawheed comes with, like the Rukya. 
using the ruqya from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam its foundation is not with Aristotle its foundation is not with Freud its foundation is with Tawheed he said the more a person learns about this they get peace and have a relief from stress and this knowledge is the basis and the purpose of faith and the more the person learns about the names and the attributes of Allah the more his faith increases and the stronger his conviction becomes Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al-ameen Nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'een ma ba'd my beloved brothers and sisters in Al-Islam, you can hardly open up the book of Allah, the Mus'haf, the Qur'an, Al-Qur'an Al-Aziz. You can hardly open up the book of Allah, except that you will find a verse ending in a name and or an attribute of Allah at the end of those verses. Inna Allah ghafoorur rahim Indeed Allah is all forgiving most merciful Wa kana Allahu aliman hakima Allah is ever all knower all wise Wallahu azizun dhun tiqam And Allah is almighty and all able of retribution Wa alamu anna Allah ya'lamu ma fi anfusikum Fahdharu And know that Allah knows what is in your minds So fear him and know that Allah is all forgiving, most forbearing. What can Allah Qawiyan Aziza? And Allah is ever all strong, almighty. Inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba. Surely Allah is a watcher over you. Allahu ghaniyun hamid. And Allah is rich, worthy of all praise. In the batasha rabbika lashadeed. Verily Allah, he says, the grip of your Lord is severe. Innahu huwa yubadi'u wa yu'eed. And verily he is he who begins and repeats. Wa huwa al-ghafoorul wadud. And he is the all-forgiving. And he is full of love. Dhul arshil najeed. And he is the owner of the throne, the glorious. Fa'alul lima yureed. And he does whatever he wants. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, while giving the khutbah to the Muslims during his khilafah, his caliphate, he said, Ya ma'ashar al-Muslimin, istahyu min Allah, fa walladhi nafsi biyadih, إني لا أذل حين أذهب إلى الغائط في الفضاء متقنعا بثوب استحياء من رب عز وجل. أبو بكر said, O party of Muslims, you should have shyness with Allah, for I swear by the one who has my soul in his hands, at the time that I go out to take protection under the shade. When I go out and I cover myself to relieve myself, that is to go to the bathroom, out of shyness, I cover myself from my rub. I cover myself from my Lord. What is it that made him go out just to go to the bathroom when no one else is around to see him? And he still covers himself except Tawheed, except understanding the names and the attributes of Allah, that Allah is Raqib, He's watchful, that Allah is Al Basir, that He sees, that Allah is all knowing Al Alim. The ulama of Islam, brothers and sisters in Al Islam, you should know that Tawheed, as Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyyah said, that Tawheed is the refuge of even the enemies of Tawheed. Listen closely. Even the enemies of Tawheed, the people of Shirk even turned to Tawheed. Ibn Qayyim said even the enemies of Tawheed sometimes turn to Tawheed. He said Tawheed is the refuge of its enemies. It's the refuge of the A'da of Tawheed and the Awliya of Tawheed. All of this is from really, truly knowing Allah and having a good understanding of Tawheed, more specifically the beautiful names and perfect attributes. So when the awliya, those supporters 
of Islam and Tawheed when they understand the Tawheed and they understand Rububiyyah and Uluhiyyah and more specifically, more specifically the names and attributes of Allah it just increases them and it beautifies them for he Ibn Qayyim al jawzi he says those people like Fir'aun when it was time to be drowned he made a statement or he attempted retreating to Tawheed he attempted to save himself by way of Tawheed he tried to save himself not by shirk anymore but by way of Tawheed a man who used to say I am your Lord the Most High but when the waves got heavy when the sea got tumultuous he retreated a mushrik to Tawheed because Tawheed is the saving force he says in the same way the followers of the messengers resorted to it and by it they were saved from that which the polytheists were tortured with in this world and that which is prepared for them in the next life brothers and sisters in al-islam Tawheed is the answer and we do not say that you cannot seek medical attention we do not say that you can't look at something that's beneficial in the society to help rid yourselves of psychological or social problems and the like but we're saying that it all goes back to Tawheed and Tawheed is sufficient as a remedy for the spiritual illnesses for the mental illnesses for the physical illnesses for any type of illness whatsoever hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabatihi ajma'in wa aqim as-salah